Hi, this is Mrs. Often, and today we're discussing multiplication, division, and exponentiation with complex numbers in our cis theta form. Now, of course, you can multiply um, complex numbers if they're in the standard form by using the distributive property. And you can divide complex numbers in the standard form by using the complex conjugate and multiplication. But how can we multiply, divide, or perform exponentiation when numbers are written in R cis theta form? So I've given two complex numbers here. Z1 is 5 cis 30, and Z2 is 8 cis 150, and asked, what are all these different values? Well, we'll find out. To multiply Z1 times Z2, we're going to multiply the moduli and add the arguments. I think this is pretty easy to remember. Multiply the moduli, both start with M, add the arguments, both start with A. So when I multiply Z1 times Z2, first I'm going to multiply my moduli. 8 times 5 is 40. Then I'm going to add my arguments. 30 plus 150 is 180. Close my parentheses there. Now for our purposes, this answer of 40 cosine 180 plus I sine 180 is perfectly fine. But if you want, you can convert this to standard form. And in standard form, this would just be negative 40. If you don't believe me, you can try it for yourself. OK. To divide two complex numbers given in cis notation, well, we do the inverse operations. Instead of multiplying the moduli, we'll divide moduli. And instead of adding, we'll subtract the arguments. So I have the same Z1 and Z2, and now we're going to divide them. So I'll divide 5 divided by 8. I'll stick with the fraction 5 eighths here. You could change this into the decimal fraction, um, 625 thousandths. I'm going to subtract the arguments. That's going to give me cosine negative 120 plus I sine negative 120. Now, frankly, I really do not like to have negative angles. I would prefer to have a coterminal angle here. So I'll just add 360. And instead of having cosine negative 120, I'm going to write cosine 240, because that angle is coterminal. And the same thing over here. I'll add 360 to negative 120, and I'll have I sine 240. So the division gives us 5 eighths times cosine 240 degrees plus I sine 240 degrees. So that's what I like about trigonometric no notation is that it's quick and easy, especially with division. Multiplication, eh, it's a little bit better, but division is a lot faster. We can also raise complex numbers to powers. Raising a number to a positive integer exponent is just like repeated multiplication. So for example, if I have z is r cis theta, then z squared is like r cis theta times r cis theta. Oh, it's r squared cis 2 theta, because I would add, multiply the moduli and add the arguments. If I have z to the third power, well, it's like I take this answer and I multiply by z again. So I would have r to the third power times cis 3 theta, because 2 theta plus theta is 3 theta. If I have z to the fourth power, that's like taking this answer and multiplying by z. So now I have r to the fourth cis 4 theta. So if I look, I have r cis theta, r squared cis 2 theta, r to the third cis 3 theta, r to the fourth cis 
for theta. So hopefully you notice a pattern here that the powers of r are going up by 1 each time, and my coefficient of theta is also increasing by 1 each time. The generalization of this allows us to arrive at a really important theorem for complex numbers called de Moivre's theorem. And Abraham de Moivre was a famous mathematician, and one of the things that he proved was this theorem. And he says that if you're given z in trigonometric form, r times cosine theta plus i sine theta, then z to the nth power is equal to r to the nth power times the quantity cosine n times theta, the exponent times theta, plus i sine n times theta. I put this n theta in parentheses so that it could be differentiated from sine. Okay, so this is de Moivre's theorem. Start here to raise z to the power, raise the modulus to the power, multiply the argument by the exponent. So we're going to do a quick example of this. We're going to find the value of negative 1 plus the square root of 3i to the 12th power. Now, let's be honest here. If we were going to raise this to the 12th power without using trigonometric forms, we would have to be doing negative 1 plus square root of 3i times negative 1 plus square root of 3i times negative 1 plus square root of 3i 12 times. Awful. This actually, even though you have to change it to trigonometric form first, is so much faster, especially for large exponent values. So my modulus is negative 1 squared, that's just 1, plus square root of 3 squared, that's 3. So 1 plus 3 is 4, square root of 4 is 2. Okay. So I have 2 cis, now I need to figure out my theta value. So I'm going to do inverse tangent of square root of 3 over negative 1. Oh, by the way, this is a quadrant 2 number. So I'll just keep that in mind. This is in quadrant 2. That's going to help me when I'm evaluating the answer I get from inverse tangent. Okay, because I got negative 60, okay, negative 60, like not a quadrant 2 angle, it's really going to be 120 degrees. So really what I have here is 2 cis 120 to the 12th power. Okay, so first I'm going to evaluate 2 to the 12th power. And 2 to the 12th power is 4096. Then I'm going to multiply 12 times 120. Okay, so that's 1,440. Now, honestly, it would be totally fine to leave your answer like this, except that we did start out in standard form. So let's change this back to standard form. Okay, I'm just going to do some scratch work over here. Cosine of 1440, what's that value? 1. Okay, and I'm going to bet that sine of 1440 is 0. So I have an answer 
of 4096 times 1 plus 0i, or just 4096. So this number raised to the 12th power actually gave me a real number back again, 4096. Oh, and this tells me that one of the 12th roots of 4096 is this imaginary number. I really don't know what the other 11 roots are, other than 2 and negative 2, but, you know, there's 9 more out there for you to discover.